Welcome to the Renaissance and welcome to the Negro and his chain, a reply part one. And this very important notice to you, our dear viewer, this video is not intended to offend anyone. It is not a propaganda video. It is made in good faith for educational and reference purposes only. Please look for the materials referenced and study them yourself. Remember, I repeat, that though not a slaveholder, yet I think that every man ought to be protected in his property, and as the laws of our country have decreed that Negroes are property, every person that holds a slave according to these laws ought to be protected. Humanitas, a colonization advocate, Baltimore, 1820, from the book Thoughts on African Colonization, published 1832. And from William Lloyd Garrison, I am constrained to declare with the utmost sincerity that I look upon the colonization scheme as inadequate in its design, injurious in its operations, and contrary to sound principle, and the more scrupulously I examine its pretensions, the stronger is my conviction of its sinfulness. And this is from the book Thoughts on African Colonization, Part 1, published 1832. Remember, they simply replaced the slave trade with colonization, and we will show you a little bit of what they are doing today and where they are headed to. Stooping to Conquer Have you ever wondered why the slave masters, that's the Europeans and Arabs, did not consider Negroes as humans? At least before somebody starts thinking about you as something, it starts from somewhere. Have you ever wondered where that started from? Have you also ever wondered how they reached such a conclusion? Leave that conclusion, but the Negroes instead turn on themselves. Where does the slave master's weapon of enslavement of the Negroes come from? Who and who does the slave masters, Christians and Muslims, use to achieve their evil purpose? And so, when you are told Africans sold other Africans, do you sit back to ask who in Africa has or had the capacity to sell another person? Were Negroes cattle or animals without family attachments that they could have very easily been selling themselves? When you are told people as little as the Arab could have been behind the slave trade, do you sit back to ask how possible can that be? And so, how could the big nations coming with big ships be dealing with a tiny arrow. Remember, a ship like the slave ship Jesus had a capacity for over 700 slaves. You want to tell us that men who were trekking without horses, without camels, without cars, through bush paths, could have taken 700 people. No matter how many times you think they could have done the trek back and forth from a place that was at least three days away from where the slaves were being shipped from and there is no record of the arrow owning any barracoon. Above all, could you explain how they did it without an army and then march men, women and children, remember children marching for days through bush paths with the arrow priests that number less than 20. Have you sat back to try and understand how possible that could be that 20 old men could have taken about 700 to 800 men. In fact, as at 1840, 140,000 Negro slaves were exported from the Bight of Biafra and Benin. And if you believe it could have been the arrow, can you explain to us how you believe such a thing? If you believed that the slave master could have worked with less than 20 people to sell millions, from a community that had a population of less than that number. What does this belief make you? Could you try to explain to us how you believe such a thing? Does the same you believe that the slave master is way up there, that he can't be working with the likes of Professor Gates, of African sold other Africans, and then Calloway to claim that Negroes are now Aborigines 
or are now Indians or how they were captured from America, shipped to Europe, then to Africa and back to America. What about his slave hunting partners in Nigeria and the Ensas protests and saboteurs against supposedly their own people? Have you ever wondered why that alliance came from, where that signage started from, and why the slave master is always visiting places like Sokoto? The slave master, a roaring lion. Do you remember the case of Ijele Speaks working with the descendants of the slave hunters against supposedly his own people? And for those who may not know, Ijele Speaks is typically a nobody, but like we told you, the slave master stoops to conquer. He can work with anybody, provided he can use him or her to sabotage any movement that is not in his interest of enslaving the Negroes. So that's where this person is coming in from. You will understand it before we finish. And if you have been following this channel, did you remember the comments from Best Less Casual Gamer on the same individual? We shall use his case to demonstrate how the slave master stoops to conquer the code. Have you ever read the code in Exodus 14.11? This is the code that tells them to apply force. The response of the Negroes would be, we prefer slavery to freedom. They turn against their brothers through themselves or whoever is their leader. And in Exodus 16.2-3, there you get the code for starvation. And then in Numbers 14.4, that's the code for terror. So ideally, that tells them to strike with terror so that the Negroes out of fear will prefer to go back into bondage. That's ideally how the slave trade was sustained as well. Remember, it's one thing to capture a slave and it's another thing to keep him enslaved for a very long period. So at that time, that was the same thing they are doing. Remember, that's what they want to repeat again. You don't need to believe us. You will see what we're talking about shortly. And so, from Exodus 14.10, we are told that, And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were so afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord, and they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us, to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. Remember, this is the code that tells them to descend with terror. That's why you hear the moment Biafra or Ambazonia is talking about freedom, the same slave master that liars with his brainless foot soldiers to capture and sell the Negroes will come in with his weapons, with his army, with logistics and with incitement and use them again against the Negroes to strike fear into them. So that's what this code is talking about here. And so you very easily may notice that these same people took part in the Passover. They gathered together. They agreed to move. They moved. But the moment they saw the slave master coming with terror, they were so afraid, they turned against their leader. That's just what it is. If you were to look at a place like Nigeria, look at Biafra, look at Ambazonia, you will see that the moment the slave master started threatening war, through his slave hunting partners, mainly the Fulanese, be it in Ambazonia or Biafra, you will see that some people started criticizing supposedly their leaders and their brothers for a terror that was being brought by the slave master. So ideally, instead of blaming the slave master for doing something that was inhuman, they blamed themselves. You will see where the Nigerian army, which was a slave hunting militia of the Fulani, will kill somebody. Instead of blaming that army, they will blame maybe Nandikano. They will blame somebody of their own, but they will never blame the slave master. They won't even mention Fulani because they are so afraid. And also from Exodus 16 verse 2, we see that 
And the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said unto them, Would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots, and when we did eat bread to the full. For ye have brought us forth into the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. So you see, that's how they know to apply the hunger code, the hunger strategy. If you were to check the Biafran War of 1967 to 70, the British and their slave hunting partners, the Fulanese, deployed hunger too. That's the code they are looking at. While you are seeing the book as something that could have been written by some supreme being, they know what it is, but you don't know what it is. Remember, before these people came, the Negroes had the creator of heaven and earth who they communed with. They did not worship, they communed with. So they did not pray to, but rather communed with the creator of heaven and earth, which is different from the slave masters, deities, be it Islam or Christianity. And also Numbers chapter 14 verse 1, it says, And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, and the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God we had died in this wilderness? And wherefore had the Lord brought us into this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be a prey? Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? And they said one to another, Let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. Remember, these were people that started the journey. They took part in the Passover. They have been coming and going and all that. And all of a sudden, they are now choosing a leader to go back to slavery. This is the code that tells them to strike with terror. That's why no matter what you talk about, when it concerns Biafra and Ambazonia, you don't ever hear them talk about negotiation. But they will still try to convince everyone that, oh, we are brothers. We want one Nigeria because we are brothers. We want one Cameroon because we are brothers. Whereas it is the slave master teleguiding his slave hunting partners against the Negroes. Like we always say, you don't need to believe us. You will see it the moment you find time to research the slave master, the slave trade and his slave hunting partners. You will understand what all these things are saying. And going further, if you looked at 1 Samuel chapter 8 from verse 10, you will also understand why the likes of the southeastern and south southern governors will be taking sides with the Fulani and the slave masters, mainly the British, against supposedly their own people. Remember, those people are installed by the slave masters. They are not free. If you doubt what we're saying, we want you to take time and ask those governors or all those people in leadership why they are protected by the army carrying guns around them. Whereas if you check the slave master's place, you rarely see anyone carrying guns around them. And so if you read it further down, you will see that God supposedly told them what a king will be doing to them. And you will see that it ties in exactly to those people they install in sub-Saharan Africa or what was Negro land and Guinea. And he says here, that is what the king who will reign over you will claim as his rights. He will take your sons and make them serve with his chariots and horses and they will run in front of his chariots. If you watch the Doba in Sokoto, you will see that the Fulani will use the non-Fulanese as slaves. You will see the army. They are full there with Negroes, helping them conquer the rest of the people. So that's what you see here, well coded. And he goes further to say, some he will assign to be commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties and others to plow his ground and reap his harvest and still others to make weapons of war and equipment for his chariots. He will take your daughters to the perfumers and cooks and bakers. He will take the best of your fields 
and vineyards and olive groves and give them to his attendants. If you have been following political events in Nigeria, for example, you probably remember when Buhari or whatever replaced him visited their Bonyi state governor and their Bonyi state governor to show that his leader likes his people, whether Igbos or whatever he choose to call them, said that he went to Abuja and an Igbo woman called him and the Igbo woman was a cook to Buhari. Now, if you read it here, you see where those things are well coded and documented for them. The slave master just need to be pulling the strings from behind. Those ones are house negroes. Otherwise, tell us why a governor should be proud that one of her women who should be taking care of her family is a cook to Buhari and he was bragging about it just to explain to you what is going on they all know this you should be able to ask yourself things like the palliatives why would somebody hold something that was given to him to give his people it's either those things are poisonous and they didn't have the conscience to distribute it that way so they preferred to have it in such a way that people would be said to have gone to carry it when it had expired or something remember the slave master is a subtle beast and they say fear the greeks even at their gifts the slave master can never give them that thing free that's why we told you to look at that covid 19 closer there is more to it that meets the eye and so you can very easily say that if god has not changed and if we assumed that the slave master's god or his definition of it is the almighty creator of heaven and earth it wouldn't have changed to a point where they could talk to him or whatever the gender is remember no one has ever seen the creator before so no one can tell you what the gender can be remember that very well and so outside this book we should have all still been able to commune and communicate with the creator the same way if we assumed but without considering that God is the same as the creator of heaven and earth but this code explains to them why they must be the one that gives you a king that's why you see them rigging all the elections in southern Nigeria for example you will see that they do the same everywhere to make sure they are the one that provide whoever is there you can't elect your own no matter how much you think your votes count they do not count if you doubt us put it in the comment section and we'll prove it to you where you think it counted is because their plan tallies with the people's choice and even at that the candidates know that the slave master installed them why will you think people like Nwike for example will be killing supposedly his own people to impress the Fulani if it wasn't them that put him there so that's why you see in places like Imo State for example they installed the likes of Hopos or them that's the same thing they will be doing because they understand that they are not there because of your vote they are there because the slave master put them there through the Fulani who were their slave hunting partners so they can do whatever they like it doesn't matter where you vote they will still be declared winner that's what is happening the slave master understands that if he allows your votes to count then they will be answerable to you but if he rigs it the candidates will be answerable to him this is where all those are coded. You don't need to believe us. You will see it happen in your own very eyes. And so we simply note that the spirit called upon by the Negro ancestors did not write any book and never said he wrote any book. And above all, nobody needs a book to know the creator. Ideally, it's just like somebody telling you that you need the book to know who your parents are. And so we also note that the slave trade was simply renamed colonization, which is now new colonization. Remember, when they wanted to stop the slave trade, there are those who cannot live without Negro slavery, like the British. They love Negro slavery. That's all you see them running around. Look at Biafra, look at Ambazonia. That's all you are seeing going on there. And in the event, you doubt that these are just mere nomenclatures. Why do you think they change the names or the terminologies but not what they are doing? If you were to check very well, you see that in 1967-70, to 70, the Biafran War, the British did exactly what they are doing today. 
because that's what their forefathers coded for them on Negro slavery. If you also check during the slave trade, they did exactly the same thing. And in the event you think the book could have been written by some spirit or some higher supreme being or inspired by them, we have a little question for you. So let us look at Genesis 2 verse 13 and it says, And the name of the second river is Gehon, the same is it that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia, and the name of the third river is Hidekel or whatever. But our interest is the same is it that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia. Remember, this was just when Eden was just created. So our question to you is, who gave the name of that place as Ethiopia? Remember, if you were to look at the verse closely, it's telling us that it is the same river that compasses the whole land of Ethiopia. So at that time that the world was still being created, who created that land and called it Ethiopia? Remember, like we always tell you, the Negroes used to be known as Ethiopians. But the slave master went and changed Abyssinia to Ethiopia to continue what he is doing today. And let us also reference the Quran, commonly called the Al-Quran of Muhammad, translated from the original Arabic into French by the Sia de Raya. And this was first American edition, published 1806. Please remember that what you call the Holy Quran today, this is what it looked like back then in 1806. And here, talking about Abraham, it says, And he said, What shall become of my lineage? He answered, Paradise shall not be open to the unjust. We have established the temple of Maker for a sure refuge of the people. In repentance, he made his oratory at Abraham's place, and we have commanded Abraham and his smell to keep clean my house for them that shall repair thither in procession with humility and adoration when abraham received this command he said lord fortify this city and enrich its people with all good things so our interest here is just the maker mentioned and the name maker must have been given to the area by humans so God is telling it maker. Remember the Negroes have their own places too. In these two books, there is none that has the names of the Negro cities. It's only the slave master cities. So again, we ask you, who gave the name of this place? And then, is it God copying from man or man copying from God? And so, as we previously asked you about the Bible, who gave the name Ethiopia to that region? who gave the Negroes the name Ethiopia. Remember, that's what they used to be called. And so, let us reference an universal etymological English dictionary comprehending the derivations of the generality of words in the English tongue, either ancient or modern, from the ancient British, Saxon, Danish, Norman, and modern French, Teutonic, Dutch, Spanish, Italian, as also from the Latin, Greek, and Hebrew languages, each in their proper characters by Nathan Belly, and this was published 1751. And here it tells us that Negro in bracket means one born in Negritia in Africa or of Niger in bracket black, a Niger, a black more or black slave. So remember, they tried to label the Negroes as slaves. And you also notice that Negritia is a synonym for Nigeria or Negroland. So ideally, this can also read one born in Negroland or so-called Nigeria. And so, to better understand how Negroes always work against themselves, sabotage themselves, and do exactly what is coded in the books, let us look at the case of that Ijele speaks, a refugee in Turkey and how he came back and what they have planned. Remember, if you study the slave master as much as we have done, you will be able to preempt and predict him. The slave master is predictable. He is never smart. He is not as sophisticated as you might be thinking. The only reason you think that way is because you have not studied 
the historical records. And so, from previous comments, remember we mentioned best less casual gamer who claims to be able to you and how he was celebrating this semi jealous speaks. You probably remember these comments. The Renaissance, Ijele speaks is kicking Nandekano's ass really bad. You better make another video to defend your Arachuku brother before Ijele kicks him into obscurity. Remember, the Ijele was a refugee in Turkey. They obviously contracted him. We are going to show you what their plan is. It's very easy to see. Like we told you, the slave master is never smart. And he goes on further to say, At the Renaissance, Oh, you don't have time to make another video on Ijele Speaks. Remember, you are under oath and also under command and control. You are our terrorist supreme leader. The one who has the power to decide who lives or dies will not be pleased with you. Please take note of their little game. We want you to compare what he is saying with this tweet from the Fulani governor of Kaduna, the same one that said, those that got help whose houses were burnt by his people and they got help from some human beings let's say in the u.s some pastors for example would ask other pastors to help them after their houses were destroyed by the fulani we are going to be prosecuted look at a tweet made by him and compare it with what this guy is saying here remember they know how to celebrate even an evil done by their own brother whereas the negroes will condemn even the best thing as far as it is done by their own sibling understand that's the big difference and here Erufai, the fulani governor of kaduna tweeted in 2012 we will write this for all to read anyone soldier or not that kills the fulani takes a loan repayable one day no matter how long it takes but then the Negroes, like you have Mwike, Governor Mwike in River State, will take sides with these same people and be killing his own people. You see why they call the Negroes fools. You see why they call them born slaves. That governor is supposedly a lawyer that has a degree, so to say, educated, but he cannot handle his own brothers the way others do. So that's how the bad name came. That's how the Negroes were seen as animals because whoever is doing that should be considered foolish. Whether you believe us or not, whether you support what he's doing or not is a very simple thing, commonsensical thing to see. So that's where those things are coming from. Whereas the Fulani are telling you that even if their brother is a terrorist and you kill him, they will kill you. These ones are helping you kill their own brothers and falsely accuse them of being terrorists. You see how smart the slave master plays and you see why the slave master is always hiding behind the Fulani. And so someone else replied him to say Udele is inconsequential. Like you already know, Udele is a derogatory name. It actually means vulture to the guy because everybody knows he is sabotaging his own people, which doesn't really make sense. But we want to show you what their plan really is so that you can see that the slave master is predictable. And it goes further to say, let him travel to his village and talk his jargons. He is not in mate. And best less casual gamer who claims to be able, but we are sure he is likely Fulani living as an enemy within because he is even helping to divide the people. Those are the tricks they play. So when you see it, you say this people are so foolish you won't know that it is an enemy within so he replied him to say my friend he will go to his village and say whatever he likes and nothing will happen to him unless you are inferring the terrorist and the colonel will send his hit squad after him i believe oba still has one day to apologize please remember that they see everything you do as terrorism and everything they do as good if they kill 200 people there's no problem with it if you ask them they will say didn't you hear when one fulani was killed two years ago and going forward here the same guy writes five days without a jelly ipob have their foreign slave master sponsors to thank for taking Ijele off the internet. The destruction of the Iboris through IPOB is in the full swing. Now, ask this person saying Ibo is being destroyed by IPOB, what IPOB is doing to destroy Ibo. 
It's just that the Fulani and the British have planned a major massacre in the area. That's all that is happening. But you see how they play their card. But we want to show you what they want to use Ijele speaks for so that you can watch it happen. And he goes on to say, at the Renaissance, Odujuwa, Kwarafa, IPOB, etc., all cut from the same cloth. Please remember that they are working to defend one Nigeria. One Nigeria allows the Fulani, just like one Cameroon, to be used by the slave masters of old, the same way they did the slave trade, to enslave the Negroes. That's all the one Nigeria is doing for them, which we shall show in a subsequent video. Many people may not know, but we shall prove it beyond any reasonable doubts. And above all, they are written down as well. They wrote their plans, including how they will impose their languages and Islamize the Negroes. He goes on to say, at the Renaissance, Aro are no different from the Fulani. I see through your bullshit. Now, he is trying to tell us that the Aro are the same as the Fulani. The Aro population was less than a thousand in the 1930s census, whether estimated or not. That is including men, women and children. Then what they singled out to use for their lie is the priests who number less than 20. They now brought in a so-called urban warriors. But those are by the way, we want to show you the conspiracy of Vigile Speaks. And here again, he writes, At the Renaissance, Arrow were not slave raiders. Arrow were the masterminds and middlemen in the slave trade. Now, he tries to present it as if it was a trade. Remember, it's impossible for you to gather 400 men, women and children without military force and be bargaining to sell them. It's only the thriftless group that they still use today, that they used back then, which we are going to show part of it shortly in this video. He goes on to say, they masterminded the slave raids and sold the captured slaves to the Europeans in exchange for European goods. Please let that sink into your coconut head. Remember, the difference between the Fulani, in all honesty, and the Negroes is that they understand when the slave master is lying on their behalf. You see how they are sustaining the lie of how it could have been a sale. And the Negroes are buying into it. Some Negroes even believe that their fathers could have sold themselves without trying to break it down analytically to explain how possible it could have been. How the slave master could have gotten 400 people from a community of less than 200 people. Those are little ways to understand that it couldn't have been a sale. We shall continue to prove it to you with the number of communities and nations destroyed by the slave hunters. And he goes on to say, Now, when people say Aro, they are not only referring to Aro Chuku, the place the Aro spread out from, but also to the Aro settlements scattered all over southern Nigeria, Middle Belt, Nigeria, and Cameroon. You see how smart they play. He is pushing the narrative to a point where you will think Aro is such a large community. These were just the priests. The lie of being behind the slave trade was used by the slave master to sell his golden calf of Christianity and Islam, which we shall look at in a subsequent video. Our interest is for you to see how they behave. He claims to be Igbo, but he's telling us Aro are not Igbo because the slave master knows how to divide and pit you against your brother, either by false accusation or by other means but whatever happens he must lie and he goes on to say examples of such settlements are around this world Ozoakole, Ndieni, Igumete etc. Ozoakole for example took over the slave market from Bende after the letter fell to the British. Now we challenge him to show us where he read this from. Remember they don't pass and can't pass an exam without quota system so they don't get things into their head easily. It's only the slave master that knows how to condition them to reason along a particular line. There is nothing like you have a slave market that somebody else will take over. Remember, when they tell you slave market, they are suggesting to you that there is some way you will take two to three hundred men, women and children to the market. They start there, sit there, be eating, and then people will come and price them as if they are commodities. Bear that in mind. Whereas it was a military thing, when the slave master comes, he will go and alert his uh, slave hunting partners. They used to travel inland. If you are looking at your screen, you see this map, you see this river. It runs down to the north where their wholesale merchant Negro slaves live. So they will tell them 
and then they will come down to the south if the british do not do it themselves they were slave hunters as well then they will come and raid the place it takes months they will raid an entire community that community will become completely wiped out from the face of the earth we can give you examples in a subsequent video if you doubt us so that you see what he's talking about you notice in the case of the arrow they are lying that the arrow could have been behind the slave trade but they can point at one community that was desolated by them not even one so when they lie they forget the consequences of their lie they forget that slave raiding comes with depopulation so they keep telling you it could have been the arrow it could have been the arrow simply because at that time people were looking for ways to end the slave trade which we shall look at in a subsequent video our interest is to show you the conspiracy of that Ijele speaks but then before we go into it further if you knew him could you ask him what is he really fighting for remember he just came out and started fighting IPOB for nothing accusing their leader of something that is totally unrelated like we told you if you look at the code they believe that the negroes will turn against themselves turn against their leader that's what that code is showing now instead of keeping quiet even if you don't support the movement the average negro will go and call master to say come is there something you want me to do to bring this man down he shouldn't even complain we are created to be slaves, which is exactly what Ijele speaks is supposedly doing. There are many of them doing it, even some women, even those that are refugees outside. They can ask themselves, why are we refugees outside? They are fighting their siblings. So you understand how the Negro operates. The same thing you saw during the civil rights movement. If you look at the quote on your screen, you understand what we're saying. And you see that Kataji Woodson, the father of Negro history said, one can cite cases of Negroes who opposed emancipation and denounced the abolitionists. So that's the same thing that is happening today. You see Kano and you see Ayaktaba in Ambazonia, all of them looking for freedom for the Negroes. But then you see some people within them fighting them over nothing. It is the same case with this Ijele speaks, even though we know his own is coming from portion of stew from the slave master, but at least that's the same thing he's doing. People are celebrating him. All he's doing is to start demonizing the movement, calling them whatever names he likes. But we're trying to show you exactly what they have planned. And so to better understand the two monsters we are dealing with, let us reference Nigeria, our letters protectorate by Charles Henry Robinson. And this was published 1900. And here we are told that England moreover has a far higher degree of responsibility in regard to the suppression of the slave trade than any other nation because england was for upwards of two centuries the greatest slave dealer in the world now you see how the greatest slave dealer in the world was able to deceive the victims of his man's inhumanity to man that it could have been the arrow we challenge you to look at this yourself you understand what is going on but our interest is to show you how the alliance of the british and the fulanese work both are masters in slave hunting and slave raiding so don't be deceived by the acclaim of the arrow or no arrow all you need to debunk it is to go and read 